Here we'll examine how changing the temperature of a sample of gas can change the kinetic energy distribution and the rate of a reaction of its particles. Here we'll imagine a collection of gas particles randomly moving in a container at relatively low temperature. Notice the particles are moving with a variety of speeds. So what do you think will happen if we increase the temperature? Let's see. We see that with an increase in temperature, the particles are noticeably moving faster. Another way of stating this is by saying the average kinetic energy of the particles has increased. In fact, it's good to know that the average kinetic energy of particles in a sample is proportional to its absolute or Kelvin temperature. The higher the absolute or Kelvin temperature, the greater the average kinetic energy. The kinetic energy distribution for the particles at the lower temperature might look something like this. How do you think this curve will change if we increase the temperature? Let's see. We see at the higher temperature, the curve changes quite a bit. It moves more to the right and spreads out. Here we'll look at the low temperature and high temperature curves on the same graph and compare them. Notice that both curves start at the origin. This is because at both temperatures, all of the particles are moving. There are zero particles with zero kinetic energy. If we consider lower kinetic energies or slower speeds, like this kinetic energy, we see that at the higher temperature, there are less slow particles. If we consider higher kinetic energies or faster speeds, like this kinetic energy, at higher temperature, there are more fast particles. It makes sense that at higher temperatures, there are less slow particles and more fast particles. Remember, in any chemical reaction between particles, there is a threshold or activation energy, above which there is sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision, and below which there is not enough kinetic energy for a successful collision. We can add this activation energy to the kinetic energy distributions at low and high temperature. We'll look at each curve separately. Here is a curve or distribution for the lower temperature. The area under the curve above the activation energy represents the fraction of particles with sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision. And the area under the curve below the activation energy represents the fraction of particles with less than sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision. We'll make a little triangle, which roughly approximates the area under the curve above the activation energy, or the fraction of particles with sufficient kinetic energy. Let's see how many of these triangles will fit under the whole curve. We'll call the first triangle number one, and we'll add enough triangles to approximately fill up the area under the whole curve. These 19 triangles represent the total population of particles in the sample. We see that only 1 19th of the particles have sufficient energy for a successful collision. Or only about 1 out of every 19 collisions will be successful. 1 over 19 works out to a little over 5%. So only a little over 5% of the collisions will be successful at this low temperature which means the reaction will be slow at this low temperature. Now we'll keep the activation energy the same and show the curve or distribution at higher temperature. The area under the curve above the activation energy represents the fraction of particles with sufficient kinetic energy for a successful collision at this higher temperature. We can estimate that this area is roughly 40% of the total area under the curve at this higher temperature. So we can say that roughly 40% of the collisions will be successful. So the reaction will be much faster at this temperature than it was at the lower temperature, where only a little over 5% were successful. Chemists have determined a kind of rule of thumb when the activation energy is near the right-hand side of the curve, like this one. Remember the area under the curve to the right of the activation energy represents the fraction of particles that will have successful collisions. 
will state that this curve or distribution occurs for a sample at temperature T. Let's see what happens when we increase the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius. We see that at temperature T plus 10 degrees, the curve moves to the right and spreads out a bit. The area under the curve to the right of the activation energy is this. This is about double the area for temperature T. Here we'll show both the curve for temperature T and for T plus 10. This area represents the successful collisions at temperature T. Well, this area represents the successful collisions at temperature T plus 10, which is about double the area at the lower temperature T. Both areas are shown here. Again, the area to the right of the activation energy under the orange curve is about twice the area under the blue curve. The result is the rate of the reaction at temperature T plus 10 degrees is roughly double the rate at temperature T. So the rule of thumb is, when the activation energy is near the right side of the curve, increasing the temperature by 10 degrees Celsius roughly doubles the reaction rate. Music